All right, today we're going to be looking at the sentence bracket in German. What we're going to do is look at a verb with a separable prefix, anrufen, to call up, and uh, use this in a, in a German sentence and go through the sentence uh, part by part, uh, take it apart grammatically to see how the sentence bracket works. Um, then we're going to play of word order to show that the sentence bracket is uh, independent of word order. Uh, and then finally we're going to con conclude with a compound verb, uh, einkaufen gehen, to go shopping. So using two verbs instead of one uh, to demonstrate the same effect with the sentence bracket. So let's take a look at this uh, verb anrufen to call up. You recall that uh, verbs with a separable prefix, the prefix is actually stressed, therefore uh, the stress over the A, anrufen. Now the sentence, sentence we're going to be looking at is, ich rufe heute meinen Freund an, I'm calling my friend up today. So going through the sentence, uh, component by component, we have the subject, ich, is the first person, singular, personal pronoun, I, uh, the verb, uh, rufe, which uh, agrees, uh, subject verb agreement, it's a first person singular conjugated form of the verb. Um, I call. The adverbial time modifi modifier, heute, now since it's an adverb, it adds to the meaning of the verb. Well, when do you call? I call today. We want to get that as close as possible to the verb. Uh, therefore, we're going to put it right after the verb. And then we have meinen Freund, which is the accusative object. So something in the sentence has to receive the action of the verb, and that's going to be my friend. My friend receives the action of being called up, therefore he's going to be in the accusative case. And finally, at the very end of the sentence, we still have uh, a part of the verb, an, up. Uh, this is the separable prefix. And you'll recall from prior discussions with uh, separable prefix verbs that the separable prefix always comes at the end of the sentence. So since it comes at the end of the sentence, we will have something which we call a sentence bracket. So uh, we have in the first position the personal pronoun ich, the verb rufe is in the second position, and you'll notice that this, this verb with a separable prefix forms a bracket around the remainder of the sentence, the, which I call the third element, everything else that doesn't fit into one and two. Um, ich rufe an. Ich rufe heute meinen Freund an. Now, just because I have the sentence here beginning with the subject, the person performing the action, the person who's actually calling, doesn't mean that uh, well, that it has to stay that way. If I want to, I could sh change the word order around, d depending upon what I want to emphasize. So in this sentence, meinen Freund is the thing I want to emphasize. Uh, therefore, I'm going to put him at the beginning of the sentence. He's going to be in the first position. However, you'll notice that the second position still is the verb. This is a, a standard rule of thumb, that the verb in statement sentences in German always comes in the second position. And since it's a separable prefix verb, the prefix comes at the very end of the sentence, forming again the sentence bracket. Now, ich has to, the subject of the sentence has to come in somewhere since it's no longer in the first position, it can't be in the second because that's where the verb is. So the third position was sort of the catch-all. So, um, since it's a subject of the sentence, I want to get that as close to the verb as possible. And then after that, we could follow it with the adverbial time modifier, modifier heute. So uh, just a quick demonstration to show that uh, the sentence bracket still works regardless of sentence syntax or the word order of the sentence the word order of the sentence. Now finally, the last thing I want to look at is something in German that they call a, uh, a compound verb. So, for instance, uh, einkaufen, gehen. We have two verbs, einkaufen, to shop, gehen, to go. Now, in English, uh, you'll see there we have to go shopping. Shopping uh, is actually what they call a gerund. It's a m form of the verb. Uh, that's not a standard form. So to go, to go shopping, to go um, skating, to go driving, all of those gerunds will end in an ing. So 
in German, the primary emphasis is on the act of going. What are you doing? We are going. And what are you going to do when you get there? We're going to go shopping. So what we want to do in German is to put the gehen in the second position. So ich gehe heute einkaufen. I is the subject of the sentence. Therefore, since I want to stress that, I'm going to put it in the beginning of the sentence, in the first position. Again, the verb comes, or let's say, the, in this instance, the primary, the most important component of the compound verb, the act of going, uh, comes in the second position, followed thereafter by heute, the adverbial time modifier. However, at the end of the sentence is we have the less important part of the compound verb, einkaufen. Uh, it answers the question about, uh, uh, well, you're going, but what are you going to do when you get there? We're going to go shopping. Therefore, it, it sort of functions uh, in the way that a separable prefix functions, in that it's separated from the main verb and put as a, is put at the end of the sentence, forming a, uh, a sentence bracket. So, the sentence bracket in German.